¡No se abra hacia este lado! ¡Me siguen! ¡Me siguen! ¡Me siguen! Gritaba. The gunman fired at least 150 shots, killing the Tejano singer. Mexican cartels don't spare anyone. Even many celebrities have also made their list. May 2024 came with the somber news of the death of another Mexican country singer, Kevin Hernandez. But who took his life? What was their motive? Did he do something to upset any cartel leader? And did he know that he would meet this tragic fate? Welcome to Trapdoor Gangs. Subscribe to our channel and watch till the end to find out the answers to these questions and the real reason Kevin Hernandez Hernandez lost his life. Kevin Hernandez assassinated on May 5th, 2024. Mexican news channels were abuzz with one news, the death of country singer Kevin Hernandez. And not just him, his entire family was ambushed while they were traveling with the singer on his tour. Officials say Hernandez, 34, who was in the middle of a tour, was ambushed on a highway in the northern state of Chihuahua on May 5th. The family members that were present with Hernandez were his wife, his mother-in-law, his son, and two stepchildren. Perpetrators fired multiple rounds of bullets at them and promptly fled the scene, fatally wounding three of the five family members. Hernandez's youngest son, four, and mother-in-law survived the attack, but they were injured. The gunman fired at least 150 shots, killing the Tejano singer, his wife, Maricela Sandoval, 34, her 14-year-old daughter, Angela Ramirez, and 17-year-old son, Ezequiel Ramirez Jr., from her previous relationship. When the police arrived at the crime scene, they found two trucks discarded side by side. One of them was a Chevrolet Malibu, while the other one was a 1979 Ford. Reportedly, Hernandez and his wife weren't in the same truck when the attack took place. They were riding in these two trucks separately. Sandoval's body was lying on the road. The Mexican singer's body was discovered inside a Chevrolet Malibu truck riddled with bullets in Chihuahua on May 5th. Maricela's corpse was found on the road beside a 1979 Ford truck's passenger door. His 17-year-old son was in a critical condition when the police arrived. He was rushed to the hospital hospital, where he barely survived the night but passed away after succumbing to his injuries. Official reports said the couple's 17-year-old son died the next day at the hospital from the gunshot wounds he received. The toddler and his mother-in-law are doing better now. Some reports say that his 14-year-old daughter passed away, while some claim that she is also in the hospital with her younger brother and grandmother and is recovering from the bullet wounds. But we have to wait until the latest updates come out to know more about her condition. They're all believed to be recovering from their bullet wounds according to local media. Even after taking their lives, the cartel members were not happy. When they heard that Hernandez's mother-in-law and son were alive, they went to the hospital to finish the task they'd started. But luckily, his mother-in-law was removed to a different hospital for further treatment. This saved her life. The official reports say the cartel henchman allegedly went to the hospital where Sandoval's mother was originally taken to in an attempt to kill her. But she has already been transferred to another medical facility. Another report said that after trying to eliminate his mother-in-law, The perpetrators quickly fled from the hospital to avoid getting caught by the police. Hours after the first attack, a group of armed individuals entered the hospital where the singer's mother-in-law was being treated, but managed to escape. They then subdued elements of the state police, but they could not fulfill their mission. Reports say that the perpetrators had attempted to attack Hernandez's family earlier that day, but they couldn't hurt anyone. There were minor property damages, but no deaths or injuries were reported. Armed men allegedly opened fire on Maricela's parents' house early on Monday. Day. A couple of parked cars were damaged, but no deaths or injuries were reported. But apparently, they didn't give up. They were looking for the perfect opportunity, and they finally found it later that day when Hernandez was out in the streets and alone in the truck, traveling. But what could be the reason for such a gruesome attack? Cartel members often take the lives of people on a whim, but more often than not, the victims have to do something to displease them to meet such a tragic ending. Did Hernandez do something to displease any cartel leader? Well, investigators believe that it has to do with a business owned by Hernandez. Hernandez's wife Sandoval in a particular cartel. Sandoval allegedly started managing a horse racing business named Maturana Equestrian Center that her previous husband owned before he was eliminated in 2015. Investigators were looking into whether the attack was related to the horse racing business that Sandoval took over following the 2015 murder of her former husband, Ezequiel Ramirez. The exact motive for this homicide 
hasn't been established yet. It's possible that Sandoval was earning more profit than the cartel, who owned a rival business, or their business had refused to pay extortion money to the cartel. The police are still investigating the exact motive. Chihuahua Southern District State Attorney General Juan Portillo said that they had conducted the initial investigation and were suspecting a cartel who could have been behind the attack. We have more or less identified what the people who murdered the singer and his family do and the cartel they could belong to, Portillo said. According to him, they had collected surveillance footage from the streets and had sufficient evidence to find out the suspects. This included the possible number of people involved in the attack. They hope to come to a conclusion soon. As a result of the investigations, we can assure that at least two people were involved in these events, Portillo said. Initial investigation found 9mm and 7, 62, 39 caliber shell casings at the crime scene. Hernandez and his wife's homicide investigation was already underway. Official reports said their bodies have already been transferred for the corresponding autopsy. The investigation into the homicide of Kevin and his wife is ongoing by the Chihuahua Attorney General's office. And now everyone is looking forward to the identity of the attacker. Who is Kevin Hernandez? If you listen to Mexican country music and are particularly a fan of Tejano music, you're well familiar with the masterpieces created by 34-year-old Kevin Hernandez. He later became a part of the Tejano band called H. Nortena, which was formed in Texas in 2015. The band's 2017 song Definitivamente has more than 200,000 views on YouTube. Since then, the band has written and composed great songs, with the latest number coming out only one day after the unfortunate demise of Hernandez. Ironically, the lyrics of the song were, Si Dios me leva con él, or If God takes me with him, which now seems like a bizarre premonition of his untimely death. Hernandez had a promising career ahead. He could play multiple instruments. He often sang songs about the pain and tragedy of lost love, among many other topics. They have been releasing songs on Spotify for many years now, with the oldest dating back as far as 2018. He had performed in early April for the San Jose Festival in Peral, where he captivated his audience with his musical talents. Just before the incident, on May 4th, 2024, the band had performed in the municipality of Allende, and this was their last stop for the tour. Unfortunately, it ended up being the very last tour of Hernandez's life. Was it the Sinaloa cartel? Investigators said that the perpetrators who attacked and claimed the lives of Hernandez and his family possibly belonged to the Sinaloa cartel. Mexican authorities are linking the Sinaloa cartel to the roadside murder of country music singer Kevin Hernandez, his wife, and his two stepchildren. While the news has still not been confirmed, it hasn't completely come out of the blue. The state of Chihuahua has long been plagued with cartel violence, with the Sinaloa cartel claiming responsibility for the majority of it. Several clashes have been recorded in the state between the cartel and law enforcement, and they always ended with multiple casualties. And this is certainly not the first time a cartel has taken the life of a singer. The history of the Mexican music industry is littered with incidents where singers had to lose their lifts for singing the wrong type of song or upsetting the narco lords in some strange and unbelievable ways. Mexican narcorito songs have been popular for generations, but the songs have a dark side to them. It's a subgenre of Mexican native corrido music, a type of ballad that is sung against a polka beat and tells the tales of the lives and brutalities of Mexican narco lords. As you can see, this particular genre is risky because you run the risk of upsetting a narco lord if your lyrics are too sensitive. However, it's also a lucrative genre. You'd be surprised to know that Mexican cartel lords reportedly pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to these singers and songwriters so that they can write songs about them. The reason? They want to be immortalized through these songs. The music world has always been connected with the crime world, Wald said. And it is common for ranchera singers, especially if they sing Corridos, as Vega did, to be hired to play parties for people in the Dr. Asterisky world, or to be sponsored by Dr. Asterisk G. Moneyar when they are starting out. In 1992, Mexican singer Chelino Sanchez was performing a Narco Corrido song on a stage in Culiacan when someone handed him a note. It said that he would die soon. He was startled and possibly knew what was going to happen to him. <laughs>
continued to sing like a true professional and finished his performance. It was also known as the best performance of his life. After the show was over, Cialino was abducted. The police later found his body tied up and discarded with two bullet wounds at the back of his head. His eyes were blindfolded, and he also had rope marks on his wrists. It's speculated that Cialino was eliminated by Gonzalo Araujo Payan, a Sinaloa cartel sicario, who also goes by the nickname El Chalo. His association with the Sinaloa cartel had turned him fearless. He hated Cialino's confidence and defiance and wanted to break him. That was the only reason he took his life. In June 2010, popular Mexican singer Sergio Vega was rumored to be dead after he started singing Narco Corrido songs. However, he came to an interview and claimed that he was alive and that the news of his death was fake. He would often receive death threats because of the songs he sang. When reporters asked him if they scared him, he said he had faith in God. I navigate through heavy themes in my songs. He said recently, it can be a bit frightening, but you have to put your faith in God. Unfortunately, cartel members took his life within 24 hours after he made the claim of being alive. Just like Hernandez, Vega was also traveling in his vehicle when cartel members started chasing him. He was also on a music tour in Sinaloa and had done a live concert hours before the attack. He called his assistant and told her that he was being chased. He was attacked while his assistant was on the call, hearing every moment of the gruesome incident. law enforcement couldn't apprehend anyone for these incidents. Well, if cartel members took their lives, it's highly unlikely that the police could ever prosecute them. And then in February 2024, three singers were abducted and eliminated in Baja, California after they sang at a funeral. According to official reports, Alan Herrera Beltran, Cesario, and Patricio Nibla were reported missing to the authorities after their kidnapping in the town of Ojos Negros in Ensenada, Baja, California, in front of a crowd while performing at an event during in the early hours of the morning. Their fault? They sang at the funeral of a narcotics dealer who probably had issues with a powerful cartel. The funeral they attended was for a person who was murdered in previous days and who, according to the authorities, had a history of drug dealing. The three members of the northern musical group Los Rivales del Norte, along with a fourth person, were eliminated near the San Juan Ranch, located in the royal delegation of Ensenada Castle. Eyewitnesses present at the funeral said that armed and hooded men suddenly arrived at the funeral in opened fire. They held the singers and another attendee at gunpoint and took them away. After a few hours, their remains were found near the ranch. Although the police didn't establish the identification of the cartel associated with this incident, the innocent lives lost cannot be revived, just like Helino, Sergio Vega, and Hernandez, who wouldn't come back. Friends and fans mourn Hernandez. After the news of his death spread, Hernandez's musical band, H. Nortina, released an official statement on their Facebook page paying their last respects to the talented singer. In a heartbreaking post, they said, A prayer for the irreparable loss of our friend, partner, brother, and vocalist, R.I.P., the band said in a Facebook statement. They added, The musical union is in mourning. It hurts me to know this news so much. I will remember you forever. Kevin, we will always remember you. Reads on the band's social networks. Fellow band members also released individual statements. One of them lamented the fragility of life and said that people all around the world would now listen to his newly released track and would remember Hernandez through it. Fellow band member Luis Fernando Peinado, known as El Dolar, said, Tomorrow this song will sound loud to the sky. The latest recording comes out tomorrow. Life is fragile. Fans went to Hernandez's social media accounts and left heartwarming comments on his recent pictures. He was attending concerts and took many photos with his beloved fans. His latest pictures were of him posing with his fans. In one of those pictures, he was sitting at a table with his fan with a warm smile on his face. In another picture, he was standing with two fans and showing a thumbs up. Although law enforcement in Mexico has said that they're investigating the case, if a narcotics cartel is involved in side, it's highly unlikely that Hernandez and his family will ever get justice. His fans and family members are waiting for an update, while Mexican music lovers have their fingers crossed so that they don't have to witness another tragic and mindless assassination of one of their favorite musicians. Do you think Hernandez's wife's business was the reason for their death? Or do you think Hernandez upset a narco lord and was served such a bitter ending? Let us know in the comments below. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Trapdoor Gang for more strange stories.